Good morning, YouTube family. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you might be. So glad to have you here joining me. I am stirring honey into my coffee right now as we speak. Ah, yeah, nice to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, Any time in the day, really. Um, or tea, I do like tea as well. But hey, you guys, today we have a pretty interesting topic because I know many of us have suffered through this and many are still suffering through it just imagining that the narcissist new life with their new supply is just beautiful and perfect in some kind of dream world while we're you know suffering and our hearts torn out and a viewer had written in just yesterday i think um, or maybe a couple of days ago and said that he felt that his soul was crushed and his heart was broken. Um, he felt like she had stolen his laughter and there was just nothing left of him. And that's where many of us remain for not, I can't even say just months because so many people who've been hurt by a narcissist, it doesn't disappear within months. You know, that's why I started this channel because I had never seen or dis discerned the difference before I realized what narcissists were. I never discerned the difference between recovering from narcissistic abuse to um, other relationships. But other relationships, we tend to recover faster because it wasn't cr soul crushing, right? And uh, we can get back to laughing again and parts of our life start coming back together. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, they have undermined you so much that you feel you don't even know that you can trust yourself. You don't trust your judgment. Everything you thought was real was fake, you know, and you walk around in a nightmare. Um, anyway, so what I'm trying to get at is here you are in that state while you're imagining that the narcissist and their new supply, they're off living some dream life, right? They're portraying themselves as the perfect, per perfect couple, and you're thinking, what the heck, you know, and they're rubbing your face in it. And you're wondering, is this for real? You know, did I deserve this? What, you know, what did I do that, that you know, made me deserve be, to be in this situation while they're living this beautiful life? And they're the ones who did this to me. You know, I'm not, you know, <laughs> you know, you're sitting there as the victim, having been fooled and treated badly and then discarded by the narcissist, you're like, what the heck? This is not fair. So anyway, that's why I want to talk about this to help you get through this part part of the suffering of the healing. I had a viewer come on and, and he was talking about how it doesn't feel like a blessing that the narcissist left. And as you know, one of my videos is about that where if the narcissist takes themselves out of your life, it's like the trash taking themselves out, <laughs> taking itself out. Sorry. So it's so funny to think of it that way, that the trash took itself out. If you thought about it in your life, in your kitchen, you're walking around and your trash is full and it's stinky and it's like such a burden. And you know that if you take it out of the um, trash can, try to remove the bag out of the trash can, things are going to fall out. It's going to, you know, it's going to be a mess. There's no way around it. You're going to be cleaning the floor as well as taking out the trash. But then imagine that you come back, you know, you leave and you come back and the trash is gone. And now there's a nice clean trash bag in there. And you're like, wow, what a relief. That's great. And that's what it's like when the narcissist leaves. But it doesn't feel that way at the very beginning. At the very beginning, you might feel like I'm not going to be able to live without this. And if you can imagine saying that about your trash in your kitchen, oh, I just can't live without that smelly, horrible trash that's overflowing and messing up my floors. And every time I walk by, I bump into it and something else falls out and I have to clean that up. You know, can you imagine saying that to yourself? Like, I, I can't live without this. I need it in my life. But the reason we feel that way about a narcissist is because of the dream world they had us living in and the future faking, um, the idealization, the love bombing, all the things they said to us about how perfect, right? How perfect you were, how 
nobody is like you. You're, you're the perfect person for them. And not just for them, but you're the best thing in the world. And, you know, they just go on and on and feed your soul and feed your heart. And you start to rely on it. You become addicted addicted to that and then they tear it away and that's why you feel like I can't live without this and if you can imagine I mean I'm I've never used drugs but I understand like getting over meth for instance is one of the worst things because they're so addicted to it that they feel they cannot live without it and if you've ever seen any documentary at all about meth users you see how horrible their life is right their teeth are falling out they're emaciated, they're malnourished, they're delusional, they, they're not connecting with anybody in their life. All their loved ones have fallen away and their life is a big trash can, if you can imagine that, right? So imagine them thinking they cannot live without this drug. They cannot live without it. That's what it's like when you feel like you cannot live without the narcissist. The narcissist is destroying your life, destroying your soul, taking everything that you had that was precious to you. All your close relationships are falling away. You don't know who you are anymore. You don't, you barely even laugh anymore. You come home and you feel like you're on eggshells and um, your world is falling apart everywhere. But you think the one thing that's good in your life is the narcissist because they will still feed you crumbs and tell you now and again how wonderful you are or now and again um, give you comfort and, and hold you or make you feel safe. And you think, I can't live without that. And that's what meth does to the addicts. You know, they feel like that they need that, even though it's tearing apart their world. So you guys, Back to the topic. And the reason I even give you all this background, <laughs> you will see. Um, the topic today is what happens when the new supply wakes up from the dream world, right? You're, you're wondering, how do they not see what I saw? How is it that the narcissist has changed for them? It's like saying, how did meth now work for this other person, but it didn't work for me? <laughs> Can you see the absurdity in that, right? That thinking. Um, but that's what we do. We think that. We're like, how can, what, how is it that this terrible person, the person that treated me so badly, can turn around and start treating somebody else so amazingly well? Did they change? Did they become this knight in shining armor or this beautiful princess? Did they become perfect themselves right and I if I had stuck around for one more month they would have been perfect for me it's like saying if I would just do meth for one more month it's going to become this perfect drug and my life is going to be so much better it's not or if I keep that trash in my kitchen one more month it's going to start smelling great <laughs> you know it's just not well, hey, you guys. So I'm glad to see you guys hopping on here. I want to say hi to some of you. Oh, or all of you, if I can see all of your comments. What do I have this on? Um, I'm not sure <laughs> if it's showing me all the comments because there are settings. And at this time, I do not see the setting showing up. Um, Obi, good to see you. And Watergrove, good morning. John, good morning. Yeah, Obi says we were all the new supply. Yes. It's like a track collection for the NARC to collect as much supply as they can possibly get. These losers are pathetic. Yeah. Watergrove says, yay, I made it live. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Shucks full, good to see you. Loading problems, yeah. Watergrove, I had to check the title. Oh yeah. John says, she said the other day when asked about her exes, no one compares to what I have now in this relationship. Yep. Oh my gosh, John, you brought up the, you know, one of my big, big points, but I will get to it. And it is true. OB1 says, I saw the new supply start acting like me and I'm street smart and told it, told, okay, hold on. Sorry, it's disappearing. Oh, heck no. I'm not getting involved in this and the rage returned. Yeah, you know what, Obi? That's one of the things we, that, that's part of the healing is we do have, and I hate to use the word triggers, 
but we do, we have these things that will set us off. Um, memories, because we'll remember, um, I don't know, it takes us back to that abusive moment, right? If we see something that's familiar when we were going through that trauma, when we smell something, hear something, a song, or the way somebody's behaving, um, it pulls us back to what we were going through and our reaction will be as if we were there. So there's got to be some healing that happens and you're going through this right now. So that's a really great thing where you recognize that sets you off, right? It makes you so angry. And now you, you need to figure out, okay, when I get that angry, I don't want to stay in that moment. I don't want to stay in that trauma. Because if you do that in your head and you keep your mind in that trauma moment, your body is going to respond as if you are in that trauma moment. And you don't want that to happen because it's an illusion. You're not there anymore. You've escaped. And they call that PTSD, right? You've escaped, but your body responds as if you're still there. Hey, you guys, you know what? I just realized I haven't started cooking yet because I'm looking at these comments and I wanted to say hi to you guys. Who is um, so sad. Good to see you. Um, Water says, I know once I tried to do my head in by saying they have heart palpitations. I'm just like, how pathetic. Just get off it and stop judging others. Yeah, I, I don't quite understand. Hold on, you guys. They, they have heart palpitations, meaning what? They're so in love with the narcissist or they're going through trauma, recovering. Monique, good to see you. Yeah. Says they start off nice, just a show. Exactly. G. Marie, behind the mask. Hey, good to see you here. They are fighting a lot now, so much so that they both contacted me complaining about one another. Yes. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love your comments. You're already getting right to the points and what's going on with the new supply. So for those of you who are still in the part or at the beginning, or I don't know where you might be, you could even be two years down the road where the new supply is still with the narcissist and they're still acting as if life is beautiful because they're posting pictures of them going out and you know partying it, it up with friends or something like that. But G. Marie is saying what actually starts to happen. And a lot of us will, will never see this part because they've cut contact, right? When they cut contact with you, they're not going to come back because they're too embarrassed or they know they've burned that bridge so much that there's no way they can come back to you. Um, so you're not going to see that part where they're fighting like they're fighting so much and trying to reach out to their old supply or exes to, to get an answer and get sympathy. The narcissist may call you, right, the ex, to, to get sympathy from you. And the ex supply might call you to confirm that they're not going crazy. All this stuff that the narcissist is doing, you know, is not normal, is it? Did they do it to you too? The new supply wants to know. And that's the reality. That's what they're really going through. Hey, Crystal Jean, good to see you. It says, hi, everyone. I'm so happy today is Thursday. I had the new supply and the fact that she, and the fact that she has three young daughters yesterday. Wait, you had? Maybe you mean you saw the new supply? She is head over heels in love. You guys remember my ex's sexual... <laughs> predilections predilection predilections <laughs> that's it um yeah yeah you were saying oh but i don't know i think you were saying he was pretty gross too so i don't <laughs> oh my goodness so she's currently right now and that's what they do they portray as if they're head over heels this is a dream they're perfect they're being told how uh how perfectly they fit the narcissist and Oh my gosh, you guys, at the, you know, this is what has been so hard for us because they parade around the new supply that is as if all the narcissist exes were nothing, including you, of course, right? And that they are the one person that can complete the narcissist, right? They're the narcissist's soulmate. And you were not, you were just a plaything to the narcissist. You were, you were the 
you know, um, the user, you, you were just latching onto the narcissist and trying to use them and make that, their life worse. And the new supply is actually the perfect fit to the narcissist, is the narcissist soulmate, is the narcissist best friend, and is the one that has the most in common with the narcissist. And they parade around with this image. <clears throat> and by the way, as their world starts to crumble, and I'll tell you what it starts looking like when it starts crumbling, but as it starts to crumble, that, that image that they, you know, the, their arrogance at the beginning, their pride about how, how perfect they were for the narcissist starts to work against them because now it's an embarrassment, right? They start to realize they're not the perfect match to the narcissist. They're not the narcissist soulmate, or if they are, you know, they're still caught in, but if we're soulmates, why is my soulmate treating me so badly? Why is my soulmate, you know, why am I scared to come home? Because I know we're going to get into another fight, you know, and this is their soulmate. And they think just one more day, just one more week, just one more month, things are going to change around. And remember that uh, image I gave you earlier, acting as if the trash in your kitchen is going to start smelling better in, within a week. Like, oh, just one more week and that trash is going to smell better. <laughs> one more month and that trash is going to really smell fantastic. You know, the, the bad smell is going to go away and the beautiful smell is going to come back. That's the, the fantasy that the, the supply, the new supply is going through. Oh my gosh, Mark. Yes. I'm going to get to that as well. What if the new supply is a narcissist? I'm talking about a master narcissist like Batman, Robin, and Joker combined. <laughs> actually, that, actually, I think that's ideal for us. <laughs> it's horrible and the worst nightmare ever for your narcissist or your ex-narcissist, right? Your narcissistic ex. Um, that is their worst nightmare is to hook up with another narcissist because the manipulation is out the window through the roof. It is insane. And the fights are beyond explosive. It's just, it's completely demolishing. So, and soul crushing. You thought that it was soul crushing what happened to you. I mean, to be between two narcissists and see what they try to do to get to each other because as you know, narcissists are so guarded with their, you know, if a narcissist, and some don't have a tender side, um, they try to target each other's tender side. They try to go for it, for the kill. And it's just horrible. They will try to destroy the other one and the other one won't allow it. And they will stick around and try to destroy each other. They, they won't let go because they need, each one of them has to be the victor, right? Oh, it's so horrible. As, and the difference there for us is that when it gets to that point for us, we leave. Like we, we don't come back for more punishment. We don't come back, you know, um, to let them tear off another limb. <laughs> we don't come back so that they can crush us more. We we let it go. You know, it gets to a certain point where we realize it's over and we got to let it go and we need to move on and heal ourselves. Whereas two narcissists will not do that. They don't let it go. They don't go away to heal. They remain and allow and tear each other limb from limb and find they will, they will even destroy themselves, allow themselves to be completely destroyed so long as they can try and destroy the other one. That's how incredibly insane it is with them. Well, you guys, let me see. I'm just trying to start up my computer, which was giving me all kinds of problems this morning. It was um, not shutting down and then it's got all these updates it's got to do. So you're going to see my screen moving around because I'm. that's the only way I'm able to see your comments. Oh, uh, you're not seeing the comments. There's probably a setting that says uh, see comments or something like that. Yeah, just look for a setting on your screen. Uh, okay, I'm missing some comments. So I'm sorry if I don't see your comments. Sometimes, yeah. 
Oh, Heidi P. Good to see you. Says 23 years of marriage discarded at Christmas. Ah, uh, Heidi, you know, yeah, it's, I've had viewers come on, like, just like you, you know, 10, 20, 30 years of marriage and the, the narcissist dumps them and goes off with somebody else. And you're like, what the heck? Um, it is devastating. And I'm so sorry that you're going through this right now. Oh, sorry, you guys. I'm trying to see the comment. And that's why we're here. Because you're you're right at the point where you're thinking, how can my ex move on and live off, you know, go off and live this incredibly beautiful life while I am stuck suffering, broken with pieces, right, all around you? Hmm. Well, you guys, I'm going to get started cooking as well. Um, hold on, I'm looking ah, for my gloves. Uh, you guys, I guess I could go on talking without making a thing here, by the way, because our topic is so incredible. So as the new supplies world, this is what's happening, Heidi. I know it looks like things are just beautiful for them and nothing can possibly go wrong. They have this perfect life. And even if right now he's not with somebody, he might be with multiple people, right? Living it up. Um, every interaction he has is just ridiculous and at some point it's just going to fall completely apart for him absolutely insane i'm telling you i've seen it over and over again and right now i know of one i cannot imagine what the wife is going through or the ex-wife because the guy has a new woman and they've been married for a few okay you guys i know you don't know what i'm making yet by the way i'm making hamburgers so i was going to make liver and onions because I realized that my body is creating liver and liver for certain nutrients. So I was going to make liver and onions, um, which I've never made before. And I thought, Oh, I'll give it a try. Um, but my husband said, <laughs> you guys will probably not appreciate that. And he suggested that I make my hamburgers, which he loves. Um, we used to make hamburgers and they would come out so dry. And then we figured, or we came across this tip, and it works every time. So what you're going to need is a slice of white bread. Hold on. And I would imagine if you have wheat bread, it should work. I'm not sure if it'll work as well, but it should work. And then the white bread, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some milk on it. And I think it's like two tablespoons of milk. Yeah, I'm going to let that soak in. Ooh, so good. So I pour on some milk and put that in the fridge. Oh, actually, I'll keep it around in case I need more. And then you mush up the bread. Yeah, completely. Okay, you don't want like big chunks like, ugh, like that piece over there. <laughs> you want it all mushed up. And I might need more milk. Yeah, so depending on where you are, if it's very arid or if it's humid, uh, if it's humid, you probably won't need more milk than that. If it's arid, you might. More than the two tablespoons, that is. So, yeah, you know, so what happens with the new supply is that at the beginning, the narcissist is telling them how amazing and beautiful and what, you know, they're the soulmate. And they're trashing you, of course, right? They're painting you as this horrible person that they suffered with for whatever, months, years, however long it had been with you. And they may even concede like, okay, it was all right for the first five years. But after that, you know, I got nothing. It just dried up my soul. And, you know, they do nothing but complain about you. And the new supply thinks, wow, what a disaster you were. And um, the narcissist was meant to be with them. And that the two of them complete each other. <laughs> I'm sorry, I laugh at that because I'm like, oh my gosh, you all know, or a lot of you know, that that's a total lie. It's a total uh, misconception. Anyway, so then they, they're thinking, yeah, you know, they're going to work out. And the reason you guys didn't work out is because, because obviously you weren't perfect for the, supply, the, I'm sorry, for the narcissist. And they are. They're the perfect fit. And or, you know, they believe that you have certain problems that the narcissist 
cysts that you have, and so they think that's why you weren't meant to stay with the narcissist. Okay, so that's all done. Now the reason, you guys, this is so cool. The reason I do this is because it helps the hamburger to be moist. It does something with gluten, um, and when it attaches to the hamburger, and it just holds the moisture in, so you don't end up with dry hamburgers. Now I know, I've heard chefs talk about you don't ever um, cook ground beef with pink still in the middle. Like you don't want it medium or medium rare. You actually want it well done. Because th this is not from, unless you're getting it from one piece of meat. And maybe in some really high end restaurants, they will ground a, a piece of chuck beef. And from that grinding, they, they cook the meat right away. I don't know. But for... I'm gonna do two packs, you guys, because my husband really loves those and he likes to have extra <laughs> around. So I'm gonna do two packs. So this is this is a lot actually. I might do one and a half packs because I have a little bit more than a pound here in each pack. So I'm gonna probably do one and a half packs. There we go. I'll use this for something else. Not sure. Maybe tacos. Okay, put that away. All right, and uh, I guess I should, I'm trying to decide if I want to mix it all right away or if I want to go ahead and add seasonings. And I'm gonna go ahead and add seasonings. Guess what? I like to do this. Lipton has an onion soup mix, and my husband loves that flavor. I mean, I can live with it or without it, but he just loves it. And if you don't use uh, onion, soup mix you can add um steak seasoning like i you know that you buy and you could just sprinkle straight on top or in and i think that's it whoa just had some stuff go flying <laughs> okay you grab that all right so the new supply all this time has believed that they're the perfect match for the narcissist and that's why they're going to last forever and that's why their life is perfect Meanwhile, you know and I know who the narcissist is and what they're like and what we had put up with. Although, if you had been with them for years, you might not realize it yet. All the different times, you, because you allowed it, you allowed it to happen in that you dismissed it because you didn't want to. Um, you're you're loving and you're forgiving and you just didn't want to hold it against them So you allowed this to happen for a long time. and You didn't realize didn't realize that it was bad behavior You didn't realize that you didn't deserve to be treated that way. So you end up um, Unaware and uh, you don't you had put up with so much but now What's really happening with the new supply is they're starting to put up with the exact same stuff, right? The insidiousness, except it moves much faster, by the way, with the new supply. I mean, the dream world and the intensity and the um, excitement might be, might look like it's lasting a long time because that part might be uh, new to the narcissist, right? Especially if they're going through a midlife crisis. They're thinking, this is amazing. You know, I've never felt this way before and they're invigorated or whatever because of the infatuation with the new supply. But infatuations all end, you guys. Oh my gosh, you know, not to talk trash about specific people, but I mean, think about it. Think about, um, and I'm not saying that all the characters here or each of these people are exactly um, these characters, but think about Brad Pitt and Angelina, right? I mean, most they were gorgeous at the time when they got together and their life seemed perfect. You know, they did all these humanitarian things together and it's like, wow, we're wonderful, perfect, beautiful people. And you just think, um, what? hold on, you guys, I got to figure out what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm going to use this board and I'm going to start making hamburgers. So they, you know, if, you know, and you were Jennifer Aniston. I mean, imagine how that must have felt. And you know how that felt. But the rest of the world was watching it from the outside. From the outside, it looked like, oh, 
They're so perfect. Things are going to really work out with them. And obviously, Jennifer is the one who had a problem. She must have been too boring for him. And that's why Angelina, what, you know, oh, I hate saying their real names, but that's why the uh, new supply looks like, you know, the perfect match for, for him. And that is exactly what plays out over and over again. And as we all know, I mean, they gave it a good run, I guess, if you want to say that. But how many years in there was it actually just a total nightmare? And we never hear that. We never hear about the total nightmare aspect of it. You guys, so this is what I do. I make the burger far bigger than you want it to be. <laughs> I might even add more meat, actually. Um, you make it much wider because it's going to shrink up. And I've had this happen all the time when I first started making hamburgers. Um, with or without the bread, you know, I, when I first started making hamburgers, I did not make it, I did not make it with the bread. And no matter what size I made it, it would always shrink up and become like a ball, a meatball. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> so what you want is something kind of thin, maybe a centimeter. Yeah, thick. And then, let's see if I can, yeah, that looks beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna do a stack of these right there um yeah so the news but you know what behind closed doors i mean and especially for that couple everybody's watching everybody you know people everybody had an opinion and people either supported them or was were angry with them and same thing happens with you right in your life but just a much smaller scale right you're not being followed by paparazzi um, there aren't pictures being taken of your ex, you know, when they come out of the house to get the newspaper. Um, so, but they have to go kind of through the same thing. They know that close family and friends are watching. The new supply knows that their close family and friends and the narcissist close family and friends and you and your close family and friends are watching. And not that you're obsessed or anything like that, or your, your family's obsessed with their relationship, but you're going, your family may come back to you and be like, oh, you know what? I saw them today at the grocery store. I saw them at this restaurant. So they, they know that other people might be coming back to you and telling you what they're up to or when they ran into them. So because of that, they have to pretend that their life is perfect and especially for the new supply because they have even more at stake because at the beginning of their relationship they knew that you were there they knew that the narcissist was coming um, off of your relationship and so they have to act as if well i don't have any conscience about that i don't feel guilty for taking the narcissist away from you and they don't see it as taking the narcissist away or actually they might act they actually think, well, this is, this is in the stars. This is the way things are supposed, this is destiny, right? They're, they were the one meant to be with your ex. So that's why it's okay for them to have the affair. It's okay for them to cheat with the narcissist. It's okay for them to marry the narcissist within two weeks or, you know, two months because, and start moving in together, you know, after the first date. Um, they believe that that's okay because, well, they were meant to be. So if they're meant to be, it's almost as if they've already been together for months or a lifetime. Anyways, just, just trying to justify their moving so quickly into a commitment with the narcissist, which, by the way, is the biggest curse and the biggest regret they will have. So when... You guys, here's another thing I realized that happens, and someone mentioned it already. Um, something that happens with every narcissist that I know. When I started thinking about this situation, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this, but every narcissist I know, and it's not like I know tens of them or anything, I know about, <clears throat> I wanna say four or five in my lifetime. And, um, I'm trying to think of which ones I know right now, like four. There are four right now that I know are narcissists. Um, other ones are not as, you know, have not been as close to me. So I don't know what's behind, you know, 
uh, in all parts of their life, all their private areas of their life. But the four that I know, I know them quite well. And the four, each one of these, oh my gosh, I didn't, you know, put it together till just now. And it's not normal. What they do is not normal in a relationship. You might think, well, some people do this. Yeah, but I noticed that all narcissists, or at least all of these narcissists, and I can imagine, I can even picture that all narcissists, why would they not do this? And what they do is they start to compare the new supply, telling the new supply that their ex, you, are better. Yes, they start idealizing you or their exes and making the new supply feel like they have to um, shape up. They have to do more. They have to <clears throat> cater more to the narcissist. So the new supply is going to, at first, they, remember they felt like they're perfect. They're the soulmate. You're, you were nothing. And you were just uh, a pit stop on their way to the new supply. You were just a narcissist pit stop on their way, way to the new supply, right? Because they were destined. Uh-oh, I'm getting meat tossed here and there. Hope my dog will enjoy that. <laughs> ah, there he goes. Yeah, he's loving it. <laughs> um, but now they're being told, oh, you know what? My ex never got mad at me about this. You know, my ex never complained about this about me. My ex never said I had an anger issue. My ex, um, you know, was always, was almost always much nicer than you are about my issues. You know, my ex understood why I have anger issues. My ex understood <clears throat> that, um, meaning you, right? <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I think I need to drink something. Um, my ex always uh, knew, you know, gave through me the best birthday parties. My ex made me feel special. You don't. You know, my ex was willing to do this in the bedroom. You know, my ex was so much better than you in the bedroom. They will just suddenly idealize everything you've ever done. And it's total baloney. Uh-oh, looks like I'm going to run out. Or make one teeny tiny burger. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So that's what the new supply is going through. And they start to wake up. And you know what? At first, they are in, they're going to be in denial. They're, it's just like you were, right? First, they're going to be in denial. And they're like, no, this, this is just a, a glitch. And by the way, it could happen as soon as one week or one month after their relationship starts. Because the narcissist behavior, their, their um, selfish, self-centeredness uh, will start to show up. Because when they get angry, when they get irritated or frustrated, they will lash out at the people closest to them. They're going to lash out at the new supply. They're going to call the new supply stupid. They're going to call the new supply, you know, all kinds of names under the sun. And... And the horrible thing, you know, that I think of is that they'll they'll try to destroy the nurse. I mean, sorry, the new supplies self esteem because they don't care. They honestly don't care about the new supply self esteem. The new supply is simply a pet to the narcissist. Yes, just a pet. Now imagine that if you see somebody as a pet, uh, which we can't, right? But you don't think about your pet all day long. You don't go, oh, I wonder what my pet's doing. I wonder how I can make my pet happy. I wonder, you know, but in the moment when you do see your pet, yeah, you enjoy your pet. You have a great time with your pet. You may throw a ball around for them or, you know, give them snacks and treats and stuff like that because you love them, right? But the narcissist does not actually love their pet. They just use their pet. They're like, well, what is this pet doing for me? The pet is supposed to make me feel entertained or you see how many I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Oh, 
course, I'm washing the gloves. Uh, if you like saying, talk amongst yourselves, which I'm sure you are, so that's good. All right, here we go. I'm going to move some things out. Awesome. I'm going to bring this pan over. I'm going to start cooking these up. Oh, I've got some breadcrumbs in here from laying the bread in there. All right. Let's turn that right on. So, yeah, you know, the new supply, as they wake up, as they start to see, like, well, why is he calling me these names? Or why is she calling me these names? Um... But they're living, they're trying to portray a dream life, just like those who are in the media. You see them, right? And every time you see them, you think, oh, they're living the dream life. Oh my gosh, you guys, the biggest example going on right now. And I don't know if you're getting the same feed I'm getting, but I can't, I finally had to say, stop sending me information or news stories about the bachelor people, holy cow, bachelor, bachelor, wet, wet, all of them. I'm just like, stop sending me those, this is so annoying. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, if you're watching these stories and you see the pictures, this is exactly, oh, how come it's looking? So, oh, there you go, so bright. So if you watch these stories, you're thinking, Man, their life looks perfect, doesn't it? It looks like they're quarantining together. They're having this beautiful time. They're in their bikinis and their um, trunks, swim trunks, and they're, you know, holding cocktails and they're having dance parties. <laughs> and you're like, their life is a dream. And in the meantime, they keep telling people, we're not dating, we're not dating, which is weird to me, by the way totally extremely bizarre that someone can say they're not dating they're just sleeping together i'm like what the heck you know they're sleeping together how ah that is so wrong you, i know that that's our culture and some people believe it's okay and yeah you can sleep together without being in a relationship i understand that can be but stop and think about it that's the worst setup for a relationship ever to, to be sleeping with the person and nobody wants to be committed, right? Or one person usually, I, I can't even say nobody. One person is going to be more committed than the other. One person is going to actually want this to work out more than the other. And that's such a bad setup. She's right away jumping into bed. And that is the narcissist world, by the way. I'm not calling these people narcissists, but that is the behavior of narcissists. They want to jump in right away, quickly, you know, they buy into this culture, this, this belief that you can be sleeping with each other and not be in a relationship. Even though you're quarantining for weeks together, you're not in a relationship. I'm like, whether you call it a relationship or not, you are in a relationship. Just because you don't define it or label it as a relationship, it's like saying, this is not a hamburger because I'm not going to call it a hamburger. I'm going to call this meatloaf. So therefore, it's meatloaf. It's not a hamburger. I'm sorry. It's a hamburger. <laughs> it's not meatloaf. Uh, hold on. I gotta find um, my. My spatula. Here we go. Oh, I can turn it down so I had it on high. So medium high to medium would be good. And you can start to see they're shrinking. Yeah, this is awesome. And I'm going to turn my pan because I have some hot spots on my stove, on my burner. All right. So uh, I'll grab a plate. I'm just going to stack them on this plate over here. There we go. So, yeah. This is what they portray. So you think, wow, their life is so perfect. It looks like a dream. They're having the best time ever. But in the meantime, you're not going to see the horrible drag out fights they have. 
Only the people who are in the house with them will hear it, will see it, right? And they know what's happening, but they're not going to come right out and tell you and, and expose it on Facebook or whatever, right? Any, all the social media. And they're not going to go running outside to the reporters who, who are maybe watching them. They're not going to go tell people they don't even know what's happening inside the house. The witnesses, right, who are seeing this. If it's um, their children, their children aren't going to go find adults to tell what's going on. They're, they're going to, you know, go to their room and turn up the music or play their video games and try to ignore the fighting. Let me see. I'm thinking it's too early to flip it, so I'm just going to move it around a little bit. Yeah. And start putting more on. So, you guys, at the new supply wake up, they have, they realize they have more to lose. They have to save face. Because at the beginning, they were strutting around like, I'm the perfect one, you're not, you know, it's obvious that they were, you know, the narcissist was not meant to be with you, they were meant to be with me. And now the new supply is thinking, what have I gotten into? This can't be right, you know, this is not the dream I was in, why, why is he or she treating me this way? Well, you know, they cheated on me already, what the heck, you know? Um, and they have the all drag out fight trying to mold the narcissist trying to make the narcissist um stand by their promises to the new supply because usually they will marry the new supply usually they will move even faster with the new supply and or even start having kids with the new supply and they may not have had kids with you and so now the new supply feels more um, encumbered or more uh, committed to the narcissist and they have to make this work. They are then more tied to the narcissist, right? Because they have to prove to you, those who are watching, they have to make sure that the reports that go back or come back to you um, are continually proving that they were Beautiful. I'm thinking I probably can even put this little one on there already. Uh -huh. Yeah. You guys, so here's the deal. The new supply, what's really happening with the new supply, as they, of course, they're stunned. Of course, they're, they can't believe their world is falling apart. Of course, they can't believe that this person is cheating on them. They can't believe... That, that all the things that they thought the narcissist was not, you know, because they had their head in the sand. By the way, the, the new supply will have their head in the sand, will allow uh, the narcissist to call them nasty names in their fight. They will allow the narcissist to, um, oh, hold on, you guys. I got to turn this up soon. Lots of juices are coming out. They will allow the, the narcissist to treat them far worse than they've ever been treated before. You know, it's just incredible how much they allow the narcissist, how much leeway they give the narcissist. And they have more to prove. They have more to prove. They have more to lose. And the abuse gets worse and worse and worse. And they cannot humble themselves. And they're so embarrassed to expose that this is over, to expose that this is a total nightmare. So they will drag it on for another few years. And that's why you look at them and you're like, how the heck are they still together? It's five years later. You know, how is this possible? If you think about the Betty Broderick, um, I made a video about that too, uh, situation where her husband took off with uh, some, oh wait, that's not the one that was ready, was it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I was, okay. So, I think we're just about done here. Wow. So you wanna cook it till it's done because you don't want medium, you know. Um, and some people are like, oh, cook my hamburger medium as if it's a steak. It's not a steak, it's not the same piece of meat. It, it could even be multiple cows that make up your package of hamburger meat. You don't want it to be raw in the middle because you could, it could have, I don't know, it's just not a good idea. 
It's not the most sanitary. Okay, Oop, I'm gonna turn that back to let it brown more. But it doesn't take very long. And these are gonna be perfect size for a hamburger bun. These are my husband's favorite hamburgers. Oh, you know what I forgot? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me put this back on. I forgot the cheese. All right, let me do that. This is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna flip it over. This is funny because it turns into almost a bowl. So I'm gonna flip it over and then put cheese on there. Oh, let me move it over a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we like lots of cheese. <laughs> and here we go. Put that over. Okay. My husband loves the cheese that gets around the edge here and becomes crispy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of bowls up a bit there. One side always browns faster than the other, so you don't need to keep it on just to brown it because you're not even going to see that side. All right. Now it's time to start flipping these guys. Okay. Down. But, you know, over and over again, what I end up seeing is that the, the new marriage with the new supply just doesn't last. But in some cases, it actually does. It lasts. But just because it lasts, it doesn't mean that it's beautiful and things are perfect and things are going really well. So the best thing that you can do for yourself is pull back and realize that your life has to continue on. Your life has to be um, completely detached from the narcissist. And that means even looking over there to see what they're doing. Yeah. Normally I put this uh, a lid over this, but I don't wanna do it while these are still going. But this is still going to be nice. Um, actually, I could put a lid over it now. Oh, so with the um, cheese on there. I'm not going to want to stack them. <laughs> So I'm going to put them on a plate, a big plate. All right. Start doing this. And I can heat them up in the oven so the cheese on top melts more. I don't want them to overcook. So anyway, they come out completely super juicy. I'm going to put some cheese on that. Oh, here we go. Some cheese on this one. And on this little guy, why not? Let's do it. Okay. No, it looks gross. <laughs> All right, here we go. And this is just cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, which I love. And usually what I would do is just have um, one pan of burgers at a time so they all cook at the same time. And once we get to the cheese level, we do, we put the lid over it. And when you put the lid over it, all the cheese melts. And actually, I'm going to put this a lid over that. Now, let's see. There we go. I'm going to put a lid over this and the heat will actually melt that. Let me move this out of the way. Well, you guys, that is what goes on with the new supply. And 
Don't ever think that the new supply has it better than you. They just don't. They really don't. They, they're just going through a certain stage. Oh, hold on. Wow, that got really bright, didn't it? Because I put that there. I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, just because they are showing pictures and you're only seeing the outside of the, you know, you're not seeing the full story. You know that the narcissist, you know who the narcissist is. You've been with them. You know how horrible they can be. You know it was exciting for a while, but even if you didn't have the horrible way the narcissist treated you, they may have just used you, which is terrible, right? <clears throat> Maybe you didn't go through the abusive stage, you, but you got used. You got used and then they were done and they were bored and they're like, okay, we're over. And you're left thinking, what, what happened? Well, by the way, that is abuse. Being used and tossed away is not what you deserve. And you, I, you may, it may even be harder to be in that kind of relationship because you think, what did I do wrong? Why did it have to end? And you think that there's something wrong with you. And it's not you. It's that the narcissist doesn't know how to have a long-term relationship they because they don't know how to actually love people they don't they see remember what i said they see <clears throat> their supply as pets and not even the way we see our pets because we actually love our pets right we care about our pets they see pets as something that serves a need for them serves a need for companionship and once they are bored and they want new companionship they just get a new pet. Uh, this is not going to fit now. And push you guys in a little bit. Okay. All right. Last one. Ooh, that's a lot of hamburger grease there. Yeah, I had to get um, a little fattier hamburger meat this time because, as you know, when you went to the store, there was no hamburger meat. And then one day there was, and I just was like, okay, I got to buy what they got. So cannot be picky. And this is all cheese. Ah, look at that. Isn't that cool? My husband loves that. All right, I'm going to maybe save that for him. <laughs> I do want to see what you guys are saying. And I know, you know, I had a narcissist come on my channel and ask, how can he have how can he have a normal relationship? He wants a normal relationship. He was bragging, of course, about what a catch he is. And that out of all of his siblings, he's the most successful, most handsome, et cetera, et cetera, right? And that he, he can have pretty much any woman he wants. And, but he says he gets bored. He gets bored of them. And, but he's thinking, but I do want to have a long-term relationship. How come I can't have a long-term relationship? And how do I fix this? And he wants, he says to me, he wants a normal relationship. So I was thinking, well, so where do we start with this? How do you tell a narcissist how to have a normal relationship? And what I ended up telling him, <laughs> got him upset with me. So of course he, uh, uh, he deleted all his comments, <laughs> which I thought was kind of interesting. I think I made him mad because I wanted him to think about it. You know, I wanted him to think about what he's actually saying to me. But what he was doing, and I was aware of this, totally aware of this. I'm sorry, maybe this is not quite ready yet. So I'm going to put this stuff over. Um, he, he wanted to manipulate me. <laughs> I was like, I was completely aware so this guy is trying to manipulate me. He wants me to tell him some uh, rubric or some, you know, recipe on how, in how to have a perfect relationship so that he can play people a little bit longer, so that he can get more out of people and so that I can fix his narcissism. And I'm like, I cannot fix his narcissism, all right? I cannot make him something he is not. What I can do is expose to him his thinking, his way of um, processing in his head what people are to him. And then by doing that, maybe 
he'll be able to see that he has to stop seeing people in those ways, right? Stop um, treating people the way that he treats them. But that's not, that's not what he wanted. He didn't want to stop treating them that way. He just wanted a normal relationship. And so that was my question to him. Well, what, what is normal? You know, to you, what, what is the definition of normal? Because as you know, and I know, narcissists do not see things the way we do. This is really bothering me. I splashed some grease up here. <laughs> so I'm going to get it. And clean it a little bit better later. So I, can't, I asked him, I can't remember. This was like about a year ago. But um, he was saying how he just wanted a normal relationship. And, you know, he tried, he tried having um, a relationship. I know this is so bad. But this is the size lid that can fit. And this part never goes <laughs> on food. Okay, I'm going to let it sit there and melt. And actually, see how all this is melting now? Just from the heat from the burger. So I didn't even have to keep it on there. It's melting, which is amazing. And we're going to put that straight on these buns. And by the way, I went to the store the other day. I was like, what? And there's some that are already eaten, by the way, because we had uh, hamburgers earlier in the week. Check this out. Sweet Hawaiian bread hamburger buns. Yeah. So we got that. They're delicious. And close this up. Turn everything off. And we're good. I'm going to take off my gloves here and see what you guys are saying. But yeah, so this narcissist wants to know how to have a, a, a normal relationship. Meanwhile, he's telling me about the, the kind of relationships he's had and I guess still continues to have. But he... He says that, you know, he could have any woman he wants and they're fun and exciting at first, but then he gets bored with them. So then he was told, well, you need the kind of woman that doesn't just jump when you tell her to jump. So he says, okay, so I pursued a woman for a while who was intelligent and um, independent, financially well off, you know, she has her own thing. And um, of course he schmoozed her and got her to believe that she's the only one as they usually do, you know. Uh, then after she falls under his spell, and of course she becomes uh, submissive to him. And guess what? He gets bored. He's like, ah, but now I'm bored with her too. So she kept my attention a little bit longer than the other women, but now I'm also bored with her. So he's wondering what, what can he do to find a woman or have a normal relationship where a woman doesn't bore him? <laughs> and I was like, are you freaking serious? Okay, so the problem is that his thinking of people, what do you mean this person bores you? So what, what is it you expect from this person? Like they're supposed to entertain you? What kind of relationship is that? You don't go in, you know, we never got to this point. We never got to that level of communication because he got tired and not, not tired. He got upset with me. Actually, he responded back and it was almost like yelling through messaging Ah, oh, what, what did he say? Something like, you don't understand. And, you know, um, oh, I can't remember what it was. Some accusations. Um, I can't even remember what his accusations were towards me. And then he just shut, shut off all communication and stopped talking to me. Because I kept asking him. I wanted to know, like, well, what does normal mean to you? And, um, you know, it is a problem that you feel bored by these women. <laughs> because they're not there to entertain you so we I never even got to the point where I got to tell him that the way he view, views people is the way a user views people like you're there to do something for me and once I receive that from you I don't need you anymore right and that's what these women were to him uh, and until he changes that kind of thinking until he changes the user thinking you know, he's not going to be able to have a normal relationship. I don't know what he means by normal. What what would be better than a normal relationship is a healthy relationship. That's what narcissists cannot have. They cannot have healthy relationships because they're thinking it's extremely sick. Their thinking is extremely unhealthy because they are at the center. They are self-centered, self-serving, egotistical, arrogant, and even the covert ones, 
who are, you know, pretend to be humble and they're self-deprecating and they might seem like they're such a big help to everybody else. And meanwhile, but in their head, in their head, they're thinking they're the best thing ever. And they're almost like, you know, Jesus's mother, <laughs> if it's a woman, you know, or they might feel like they're Jesus themselves or Buddha or Muhammad, right? They feel like they have that connection with the almighty, whoever it might be in their world. And they could be best friends with the, their almighty, <laughs> you know? That's how they view themselves. It is not a healthy way to go into a relationship. So the new supply starts to get treated just like you were treated and possibly most likely worse than the way you were treated. You just don't see that. You don't hear about it because their friends aren't going to come running to you to tell you how badly they're being treated. In fact, I know of people who are, you know, during their times, the new supply may run, may be um, running home and staying at home or staying at their best friend's house during these big fights that they have. But we're not going to hear about that. We're not going to see that, that because their best friend's not going to call us and say, guess what? You know, um, I don't know you, but my best friend who's married to your ex ran to my house last night because he was being so horrible to her. You're not going to hear that. You're not going to see that. What you're going to see are the Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, beautiful pictures of them vacationing in the tropics, right? Where there are all, uh, all these multinational children that they've adopted, making this incredible, beautiful, love-filled family, right? That's what you're going to see. You're not going to see the all-out drag out that they're having at home. That's what the new supply is going, going through. And <laughs> worse than you, the new supply has to save face. Because the new supply had strutted around as if they were the special one. Now they realized they weren't the special one. Now they realized they were not more special than you were, which is what they believed at the beginning. They're like, of course, I'm more special than the ex, you, right? So they felt empowered by it. They felt like they had grounds to be arrogant and self-importance and all that. Now they're like, Oh, if we get divorced, if we separate, if their ex, you, that is, knows that we're separating, their ex is going to gloat over this and, and mock me and tell me that I wasn't special. So, of course, in front of you and for social media uh, purposes, they are going to do what they can to protect the image of a perfect relationship. But in the meantime, they have to suffer through keeping that image, which means they have to stay with the narcissist for as long as they can bear it. And sometimes they can bear it for a long time, you guys. So don't watch, don't watch for the time, check that out, it's already melted. Don't watch for the time it ends because you may not ever get to see that. There we go, there's all my burgers. I need to put that away and make a, let me get a lunch for my husband here in a few minutes. But I just want to wrap up with you guys. That's what happens to the new supply as they wake up from their dream world. And by the way, they can wake up within, start waking up within a week. But they want to believe the dream. They want to hold on to the possible, you know, the possibility of this being real. And sadly, the narcissist is going to pour on the charm hugely and yeah like oh g marie exactly says he purposely keeps the tattoo of my name in order to make the new supply jealous and on her toes and has had the money to remove it or cover it up exactly oh my gosh so as you know you're you're not there when they're having their fights but Mar Amory or g g marie you're right you know that they're using you to manipulate the new supply, to do what they want to do, you know, what they want the new supply to do, to make the new supply do things that they didn't want to do in the bedroom or, you know, practically slave over them in the house, doing everything for them. It's just insane. Yeah. Oh, 
All right, you guys, let me see. Oh, I do need to drink my coffee, so hold on a second. Just had to go grab it. Yeah, so, you know, it says, um, yeah, we were talking about what happens uh, with uh, narcissists, and Mark says, yes, I agree. This is back a while ago, you guys. Um, what? 100%. What if their total energies are focused on destroying you, like even killing? What do you do? Oh, Mark, I did not see that. You have got to disappear from them. You have to move and not let anybody know um, what your address is that knows them, that is, right? Anybody you know, like your family or your close friends, let them know. If they see the narcissist, do not let the narcissist know where you live. If um, you have to change your phone number, you have to uh, close your social media, like so, seriously, close it. If it is about life or death, you do not mess around with that, okay? You have to put yourself essentially in witness protection and disappear so that the narcissist can't find you. And hopefully they will cool down. Hopefully they will have time enough to cool down. And if there's um, any chance, you can go to the police and ask them, what can you do? Like find out what they would suggest. But also if you can file a police complaint about it, like if there's stalking happening or threats, if there are um, any emails and uh, texts from the narcissist uh, threatening you or making any uh, claims that would... Uh, that would show that they're they're a threat to you, then save those. Do not delete those. Just because you get a new phone and all that, save your old phone. Keep those text messages on your phone. Like, do not get rid of that. Um, in fact, you know, print it out. I'm not even quite sure. Ask the police. I'm not even quite sure how you can save that in a way for over years because you might need it a few months down the road. So yeah, document everything that's happening and try to disappear, change your social media. I know that means all your other friends you may not be able to connect with, but that's okay. By the way, just keep the closest ones for yourself. And the other ones, you know, if you see them again, good. They're meant to be in your life. If you don't, then you don't. Uh, it's, it's worth it to save yourself. Yeah. Oh, he took over her and her ex-husband's purchase together. Oh, okay. Took over the home that she and her ex-husband had purchased together. Oh, no. Are you serious? So, yeah, this is what the, the narcissist will also do. They'll come in and financially destroy the new supply. They will take, you know, because the way they see it, by the way, is everything that the new supply has is theirs. And everything that they have is theirs. <laughs> it's not the new supplies. So the new supply is required to share 50-50 with them, while they are not required to share 50-50 with the new supply. Yeah. Yeah, Crystal Jean, you know, letting Heidi know who had been in a marriage for 23 years with a narcissist says, Heidi, 20 years for me. He discarded me several times, affairs, etc. But the fact that I discovered underage, ooh, sexual perversions, I left him. It isn't any easier, but it's a little better because I chose. Yeah. You know, whether you choose or they discard you after so many years, you're going to go through, you're going to go through a period of, um, of mourning, because this was supposed to have lasted. This is not where you expect it to be at this point in your life. Go through that morning. There are five steps of mourning. I think they added two more to include shock at the beginning. And I think, oh, what was the other one? Depression, maybe? But it is sadness. I mean, no, that wasn't the one. They added something else. But, um, you know, allow yourself to mourn the loss of the future that you thought you were going to have. And it's okay. But here's the deal. That was not going to be your future anyway, not with the narcissist. What your future was going to be with the narcissist was just a nightmare. And at the end of it, you would have thought, how did I waste my entire life with this person? How, 
why I didn't get to live the way I wanted to live. I didn't get to experience the beautiful things I wanted to experience. Um, instead, you spend you could easily spend another 20 years with a narcissist. But why, right? At least now you have 20 years that you can have that can be beautiful. The last 20 years, 30, 40 years of your life can be beautiful. So even though 23 years is a lot of time, know that you can have more, you, you know that you can have more life. There's so much more life left for you to enjoy. And now you really can enjoy it because it's not going to be with this horrible person. <laughs> Crystal Jean says, I guess escape isn't a vegetarian. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I do like vegetables. If you came on my uh, last happy crappy hour, or I call it crime and uh, what is this now? Cooking, crime and cooking. I'm putting it in uh, that list. You'll see that I made, uh, what did I make? Brussels sprouts. Yeah, they're so good. Oh, no. G. Marie says he bought a new Mercedes that he has no business buying and now is asking me for money. Oh, my gosh. Incredible, right? The audacity. Yeah, it is a jacked up game we, that they play. That's what Ovi says. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys are helping each other here. Thank you, Crystal Jean. This is so good. Rose, good to see you here. Oh my gosh, Watergrove says, the supply studies me and tries to think like me. Don't they lie? Because I've seen it on YouTube in my comment section. I can't imagine what it's like trying to compete with someone who's happily moved on. Oh my gosh, yes, you know? And that's the reality of the new supplies life. And this is why I was trying to tell Heidi that, you know, yeah, 20 years you've spent with them, it, it was a long time and you may be crushing. You can't, you're thinking at this moment, how am I going to move from this? But what ends up happening is the new supply will look at you. And even the narcissist, once you move on and you are happy and you have created a good life for yourself, even the narcissist will be looking at you. Both the narcissist and the new supply will be looking at you and thinking how jealous they are of you. You know, the narcissist will regret letting you go and think that if they had stayed with you, they would be happy now. Um, and the new supply will be thinking, why am I stuck with this horrible person? And his ex gets to move on and live this wonderful, beautiful life. Or her ex gets to move on and live this wonderful, beautiful life. That is the reality. So that's why I try to help my viewers move on to a great life and start working on themselves like start building the financial security you want for yourself now why not set your sights high why not you know believe that you can do more than you imagined start dreaming big for yourself but start start in reality with the small steps you may not be able to immediately compete in the, in the olympics but you can start training for it right you can start training little by little. And what I mean by that is like get get a job if you don't have a job. Um, get a promotion. Work towards a, mo a promotion if you have a job. Um, look towards maybe uh, something you would prefer doing if you're not happy in your job. Like, you know, that's what I mean. Start moving yourself in a direction where you're going to be financially satisfied. Um, you're going to start being able to build yourself up. Even if you were, say, I'm, I'm not sure what your situation is, Heidi. If you were a stay-at-home mom and you've never worked during that time what, because you were raising kids. Even if you're in that situation, start something new for yourself. And it's okay. And I tell people all the time, there's no job that you should be ashamed of. Like if, if you, Even if you have a degree and in today's economy, you may not be able to get what that degree was for, go ahead and start working at Walmart. Go ahead and work at Target. Go ahead and work at McDonald's. Work where you can. But because of your work ethic, you're going to move fast. You're going to move up that company extremely fast. And not just that company, you probably will be able to skip to other companies, better you know, positions and entirely different fields. I've seen it happen. And I know, I know one guy who started off Oh my gosh, in Home Depot, 
And he became so amazingly great at it that they wanted him to be in charge of the section and then in charge of that section in charge of this door. And then from there, you know, moving him up into an executive position. So it can happen. Just have the drive for it. Just know that you can do whatever you want. And, and don't, because you're not a narcissist, because you're not self-centered, you're going to do a great job for those that you're working for, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, Obi says, I feel bad for the ex. I would watch the ex by himself or herself crying and I would laugh. Uh, you shouldn't laugh, Obi, but I understand. You know, there's a part of you that just want is wanting revenge. But I don't know. But yeah, I, I can definitely see why you would enjoy that. But I'm at the point where I feel bad for all of them. I'm just like, that's, it's a sad situation. But I, you know, as you can tell, I do laugh about stuff because it's absurd. I'm not laughing at people's pain. I'm just laughing because it's, it's absurd. It's like, why, who does this? You know, who makes these horrible choices? Who, who stays for this? And all of us have to some extent, right? But once we get out, we realize, holy cow, I am so happy to be out of there. Well, you guys, I want to let you know that I appreciate you being here. Oh, and Jihad, good to see you. I'm not sure where you were in here. Yeah. Ooh. G. Marie says he illegally claimed my kids on taxes for 2019. Oh, no way. Wow. Yep. Yep. Incredible. Yeah. Stay out of contact with him if you can, or a minimal contact with him. And if you have to have contact with him because of kids, always have someone with you. Always have a friend or a relative, anybody come with you, a co-worker, um, when you do the exchanges um, or drop-offs or pickups. You don't do it by yourself. You always want to have a witness. So blessings to you guys. It is the end of our hour, and I want you guys to have time to to finish up your conversation. So I'll give you a couple more minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, Crystal said, I wish Escape was interacting with our comments. I am now, I hope you're still here. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, G Marie says, and then Corona came and made things even more difficult because maybe it's good because he's losing his stuff over there. <laughs> Yeah, I was losing his mind, right? And I did a video about that. What's going on with the narcissist during uh, the quarantine time and the social distancing? They are not getting the supply they crave, right? That they're addicted to you. Yes. Oh, Crystal, yeah, says they're moving really fast, which is really dumb for a woman with three kids. I know, but that's what they do. Oh, I know of others in my life who immediately, and they have, they don't have two, three kids, they have two. Um, and they move so fast. They get married in less than, I think, less than knowing each other a year. Yeah, they were already married. Um, I think they were already moving in together within a month of knowing each other. And yes, the woman had, has two kids. And you're like, what the heck is wrong with these people? But that's what happens when the narcissist gets to a person. They complete, you fall under their spell. You fall under their, their spell and you think that you've never had this before in your life and I, you don't want to lose it. So you're willing to move as fast as the narcissist wants to move because you're thinking it's going to keep you. Watergrove says, yes, he married a few times but I won't judge it. Some people get married for whatever reason, but my ex got what he deserved. Wow, I'm not quite sure what happened to him. But you know what? Usually, that's why we wonder. We're like, do they get their karma? Yes, they do. Because you cannot live this way without some consequence. You're not going to save yourself the consequences of life, right? The consequences of your 
decisions and actions. You might escape it for a while. You might be able to avoid the consequence for a while, but it will catch up with them. And they will one day cross somebody that they're going to regret crossing, especially if it's another narcissist. The other narcissist is going to take them down with them. <laughs> the the it, I don't know if you've seen it. This is a really old movie called um, War of the Roses. I'm trying to remember. Is it Michael Douglas and Catherine? Oh, I can't remember. Kathleen something. But um, yeah, so it's this married couple. They started off from college, right? They were college sweethearts, whatever. They they buy this house. They fix it up. It's incredible, incredibly beautiful, some mansion. And they, but something goes on in their they grow apart or whatever, right? They have uh, they're get, going through a divorce, and neither of them is willing to let go of the house. And essentially, they destroy the house, even though they were not willing to give up the house. They will destroy the house so that the other one could not have it. That's the mentality of narcissists when two narcissists are together. And you see it in the criminal stories too, where they will destroy the family, right? They're like, well, I'm not going to let him have the kids. And yet they are willing to destroy their kids in order to prevent the other one from having the kids. And you're like, what the heck? Then you didn't love the kids. You didn't love the house in the, you know, in that movie if they if they love their house so much why would they be okay with destroying it because they saw how much it hurt the other person and that's the way two narcissists when they get together there's nothing that is sacred to them that they would protect they will destroy everything in their life and including themselves if they know it would hurt the other person and that is why you are so lucky and so blessed if the narcissist is no longer in your life. It's like the trash took itself out, you guys. It is so true. And just think of it that way. The trash took itself out. It is not something you want to keep around. Well, you guys, I hope you had some time to finish up your conversations. Oh. <laughs> Marina, aw. so you don't like that I'm cooking. Sorry about that. But I'm doing this because my husband is in my uh, office because he has to be home to do work and I'm going to be in the kitchen anyway. But I might go back to doing what I've been doing. We'll see. We'll see. I hope I'm able to answer a lot of your questions. Um, if I didn't during the live, please comment in the comments below and I will get to your comments there. So, so many blessings to you guys. I hope that this has helped you in some way. Thank you, Crystal. I will stay strong and you stay strong too. And God bless everyone. Blessings to you guys.